Hello everybody, it's David from Langflow and I'd like to show you a really cool new feature that has been added for Langflow 1.6. In particular, adding an OAuth security layer to your MCP projects. So for those of you who may not be familiar, you know, Langflow is a low code, no code uh, visual IDE that allows you to build out agentic workflows in a drag and drop way. Um, and as part of Langflow's feature set, uh, it also has the ability to share out any of those flows as MCP servers on their own. Uh, so you've been able to do this for quite a while, but now we've added in this layer that allows your users to be able to use their own identity provider, their own login, say from like GitHub or Google or something, to then authenticate and use any kind of uh, flows that you share. So let's go ahead and take a look. So on the left-hand side, I've got Langflow, and I have this pretty basic agentic weather agent, right? Um, you know, it'll allow me to ask uh, what the weather is of any city and it'll give the results, right? But let's say I want to share this out and I want to expose it, but I don't want it publicly open. I want to secure it, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out of this flow here, okay? And any flow, so any project in MCP, it could be, you know, you could have n number of flows and stuff like that, but any project in Langflow has this MCP server where you can actually turn it into an MCP server. And this is native in Langflow. Um, this has been there for quite some time. Uh, but previously, it was either open or you could use an API key, but there was no other authentication method. So now, as of Langflow 1.6, you'll see this Edit Auth button. And if you click this open, you'll see you have some types. You have this None Type, API Key, or OAuth. Obviously, the one we're going to focus on here. Um, and with that, you know, once you once you have the auth, we're going to set that up in a second. Once you have the auth, the way that you connect is the same as always. Whether you take uh, JSON config out, you put that into your your IDE, your Genta client like Cursor or Windsurf or Warp Cloud Code, whatever, anything, any MCP client that can talk to MCP servers, this is the configuration you'd use. Um, there's also some auto install features we're going to use here um, in a second. But in any case, again, we're going to set up that. OAuth uh, authentication layer. Okay, let's go ahead and do it. Now, if you're not already familiar with OAuth, uh, you might take a look at these settings. It might be a little daunting, but let's break it down a little bit. It's not that bad. And these are all based off of the OAuth standards that have been around for years. All of these settings, uh, you can find references to all of them and what they are in the Langflow documentation. So there is a section that we've added specifically for OAuth. Um, and then you'll see this nice little table drop down this. Where do I find OAuth values? Um, so this will give you a nice idea of what should be in these fields and whether or not they're coming from your OAuth client provider, your identity provider, or Langflow itself. So the first set of them right here are, in fact, coming from Langflow. They're part of Langflow. Langflow is now being bundled with another open source project called MCP Composer that handles everything MCP, including the authentication layer. So we're actually going to say, when, we, when we're saying localhost and port, I'm actually going to instance, it's, it's automatic, by the way. You don't have to do this yourself. You just fill out the, the values. But it's going to instance MCP Composer for you to handle um, this, this portion. So I'm going to fill this out with localhost. In this case, port 9000 is going to be the default for MCP Composer. Um, and then we'll put together that server URL. And then you have the callback path. Now, I think this becomes clearest when you actually look at where that connects. What is this about? Why do I have this callback path? So in this case, I'm going to use GitHub as my identity provider and OAuth. And you can see in the very right-hand side, I have my personal GitHub account. So I'm in settings. And if I just scroll on down to developer settings, you'll see this OAuth apps. So I'm going to click on that. Now, if I went to a new OAuth app, you know, I can just give it a name, but you'll see this homepage URL and this authorization callback URL. These map to server URL and callback. They, they, they just map right across, right? Now, I've already filled one out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the one that I have. And then we're going to take a look at a couple things. Um, so notice again, the homepage URL, it's localhost 9000 and that callback. Now, again, this path that you see is part of the OL standard. This is kind of how you do things there. Um, what about this localhost 9000? Like what's going on? So what we're doing here, notice these match these values, right? So what we're saying is when I want to authenticate with GitHub, in this case, my identity provider, it needs a mechanism to call back to my uh, my MCP 
authorization layer, which is uh, in Langflow. So this is we're just telling it, hey, this is what you're going to launch. This is what you're going to call back to, right? OK, so those things match. Now, once you've created uh, in GitHub, once you've created your, um, your OAuth, you'll notice you get a client ID, right? That's the same one I have here. You get secrets. So I'm going to go ahead and generate a new one. I'm going to take that. And I'm going to put that right in here. And then I have an authorization URL and a token URL. Now, at first, if, again, you're not familiar with doing stuff in OAuth, you might wonder where exactly are those coming from? It really depends on your provider. Again, the uh, path here, this login OAuth authorize or login OAuth access token, these are standard, right? Uh, so these are part of OAuth. They are, you know, very common. Uh, OAuth has been around for a long time. There are an absolute ton of providers, and they're going to use this same pattern, right? Um, I've seen some providers that provide those URLs right in their UI. In the case of GitHub here, there's this little link, there's OAuth documentation, and they'll tell you what it is, right? Here's the identity one that's authorized, and then here's the one for your token, your access token, right? So they do provide that. I found generally for any of the providers I've used, um, they're usually right there in their docs. I could find them in a quick Google search if I needed to, um, but they're usually this same exact pattern. Okay, so great. So now I have my authorization URL and my token URL. The last two things here, the MCP and provider scope OAuth allows very granular control over permissions, but for our needs here, all we need is user and open ID. You can use exactly those values. It's the same thing that you'll see in the docs. OK, let's go ahead and save this. Now you'll see this little loading icon go, right? So what it's doing is it's now instancing that MCP composer. Boom, I get my green check mark with OAuth. It means it's ready to go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use Claude. I'm going to inject that. So just clicking that, I injected that configuration right in a Claude. And let's launch Claude. And when Claude launches, it's going to try to access my tools. Up, oh, boom. Notice that this is a sign on a sign in for GitHub, right? So I'm going to authorize from GitHub. It says it's complete. I may close that window, right? And then I can just say, what is the weather in Orlando? Use the uh, your secure tool. Now, I'm doing this, by the way, because I've learned that Claude does, in fact, have um, it, it can it can go get that on its own. Um, be, mine just happens to be a weather tool. So I'm telling it explicitly, I want you to use that tool. And you can see it popped up asking me uh, whether or not it, it could use the tool. And I said, yes, go ahead and do that. Um, so now it's going to go talk to my agent and get the weather. And here we go. OK, great. So it pulled the weather back. You can see that it made this request to the agent, the weather agent secure. And you can see the response that came back. And again, if I come over here, you can see the name of my tool is weather agent secure, you know, where it got that information from. Um, and it used my GitHub authentication to authenticate and connect to that particular tool in my server, adding on that extra layer of security. Now, one last thing I want to point out here is that just because I'm using OAuth here in this particular project in Langflow does not mean that I am essentially forced to use that across the board if I don't want to. Different projects can have different authentication, right? So it gives you that nice granular control to determine what layer of security you want for each of your projects. And there you have it. Now you can enable your users to be able to use their own login credentials without having to provide an API key or anything like that to more easily sign in and authenticate against your MCP projects in Langflow. And with that, everybody, happy coding.